Hello everyone, it's time for us to go and take a look at the Google Pixel 4 XL and see how this particular phone holds up in 2024. Now, there's a lot to like about this phone still, but I will probably tell you for the average person, there really isn't a big reason why you'd probably want to buy this phone anymore. There are significantly better phones out there in the market that are way better than this thing. So just kind of keep that in mind. In fact, I will leave some of those phones linked down in the description. You can get them from there and you can help support the channel at the same time. Now, starting off with the outside of the Google Pixel 4 XL, on the front of this particular phone, first of all, this was coming off the heels of the Pixel 3 XL. Now, the 3 XL was kind of this interesting approach from Google. They they were trying to put a notch on their phone, it really didn't work out that well. So I will give the Pixel 4 XL a lot of credit for at least being a better looking phone than the Pixel 3 XL. I genuinely think we all can kind of agree with that. So that right there is probably like one good thing going on for this particular device. On the front of the Pixel 4 XL though, you were getting a 6.3 inch P OLED display. This was a 90 hertz panel. And honestly, it was a pretty good panel. It was, you know, 1440p. And you have to remember this phone came out in 2019. In 2019, on most of the phones I would say of that year, basically had 60 hertz displays. This was like one of the few main phones that had a 90 hertz display. It was like this one and like the OnePlus 7 Pro. Beyond that, you weren't really getting a 90 hertz display on really any other device. So it was really cool that we were getting that type of capability on this type of iPhone, which again, in and of itself was a super, super cool thing here. So beyond that though, there's not really anything super crazy going on with this phone that we haven't seen already. But I will say from the front and the design of this particular phone, it definitely, I think, was a big step up coming from its predecessor. So that right there was like a pretty big thing going to probably to keep in mind as well. Now on the bottom of this phone, you were getting a USB Type-C port. So USB Type-C was very good. I love USB-C. And we've been getting USB-C on every single Pixel, I think, for the most part. So it's not like we were missing on it too much anyway, but still like another pretty cool thing going on for this particular phone at that particular time. The sides were kind of flat for the most part. On the back side, you were getting this like glass type of texture, but it was kind of like a different type of feeling. It was like a matte texture with, you know, it felt pretty good in the hand. I The specific model I had was this like, you know, orange model in the beginning with, then I got this black one later and definitely both felt great. The orange one felt a little bit different, but beyond that, there's not really too much to complain about here either. And it was genuinely a pretty good type of device when it came down to it. You were still maintaining things like IP certification. You were also getting wireless charging on this phone too. So on the outside, you were still getting a very good feeling and very good looking phone. Like this was a very very good phone when it came down to it and that was actually a pretty good asset for this type of device and something that i really did like now some things that this phone is missing that a lot of phones have nowadays you know for one you're not getting a 120 hertz display that might be a big thing for some people you're not getting like complete bezel bliss with like a whole punch display you're also not getting like maybe like a curved glass you might be getting on the pixel 7 pro but all pixels kind of have like flat you know sides now you're also basically not getting any reverse while there's charging on this phone no triple camera setup but beyond that it's still totally okay I still think this camera and this you know phone is pretty good when it comes down to it on the exterior. Now pricing wise is another thing. With the Pixel 4 XL, I mean these phones have gone down in value quite a bit. You can get them on Amazon for like less than $200. But even at that point, you can probably buy a Pixel 5 or a Pixel 6, maybe for like a little bit more than this one. So once again, I'd probably just recommend going up to those ones rather than buying this device when it comes down to it. That's basically the main thing I can kind of think about when you're you know picking up one of these phones. So from the outside and the exterior, that kind of covers it up here for the most part. Now from the camera side of things, like I said before, this phone was giving you a dual camera setup on the backside. So it's giving you a 12.2 megapixel wide angle lens and then a 16 megapixel telephoto lens. You're also getting an eight megapixel lens on the front. Now for so many years from this particular phone's you know, release, the Pixel was basically one of the one of the best, I guess, cameras, at least when the first generation came out. But then when it kind of came out a little bit later, that's when things started becoming a little bit different. And this device, for the most part, ended up becoming kind of a weirder type of device when it came down to it with the camera. Apple or Google kind of stated that the ultra wide lens wasn't that great and they needed a telephoto lens instead. I've totally disagreed with that when they, when they first stated that. I feel like a telephoto lens is actually probably not as great as the ultra wide, and ultra wide is significantly better. So that right there was one thing that kind of irked me. There was no ultra wide camera here where almost every single phone of this year had an ultra wide camera. And the worst thing about it was the Pixel's camera, this one really wasn't that bad, but it wasn't until you were basically getting, you know, all the other phones of that year, like the Google Pixel, like the you know, OnePlus, like the Samsung Galaxy S10s, all the S10s, the Note 10s, and the iPhone 11 Pros, like all those phones had significantly better cameras that year than this one. And you couldn't even film in 4K, it's 60 on the back of this particular phone. So that right there was like another very annoying thing going on for this particular device. 
So if you're going through and if you're buying some sort of phone, like you're not really going to be getting that great of an experience on this particular camera. And there's not even 4K at six, there's not even 4K on the front of this phone. Whereas on the iPhone 11 Pro, the Samsung Galaxy S10, you were able to do 4K at six down the front of the back on both those phones. So significantly better device, I would argue, on something like the, you know, Samsungs and iPhones of that year than the Google Pixels. So that right there was like another big thing to keep in mind. But otherwise, I mean, it's kind of what you'd expect for the most part. Now, beyond that, from a software perspective, this is always one of the biggest assets when you're going through and buying something like the Google Pixels. You're essentially going to be buying a phone that will be giving you really decent software experiences. So on Android 13, I mean, that's a pretty good version of Android for it to be ending off on. Now, it's probably not going to be getting Android 14 as we probably already suspected. There's probably some custom ROMs and stuff available for it, but you're pretty much not going to be getting any insane big updates for this particular device. So that's a very big thing to keep in mind. If you were somebody who wanted to go ahead and get that next generation of software on these phones, you're really not going to be getting that here. You're going to be getting a very limited type of experience on these types of devices. And once again, I would hate to, for you to go ahead and you know buy a phone if it's already going to be outdated. And that is kind of essentially what's going on with this type of device. It's already an outdated device. And I'd hate for you to go and buy something like this, especially if you're wanting to use this on like an everyday basis. So maybe for like a year, this thing's okay. But if you're trying to go for a way longer time, that's not really going to be that great of experience here. So that right there, keep that in mind as well. Now, on top of that, from the performance side, this phone was giving you that Qualcomm Snapdragon 855 chipset inside with six gigabytes of RAM. Now, the thing I liked a lot about these particular phones was that they did actually, you know, give you pretty decent chipsets. So you were getting a Snapdragon chipset as opposed to the Tensor chipsets we have nowadays. And six gigabytes of RAM was actually kind of a lot. I think this was the first RAM increase we ever got from one pixel to the other. So I was very happy with the way, once again, Google kind of approached this particular phone. Like if you're going through and uh, you know, if you're trying to get a good performing device, this is actually a pretty decent one when it came down to it, which was actually a very good thing. And in fact, it was probably one of the fastest phones of that particular year, which was a really cool thing going on for that particular device. Now, on top of that, another big thing going on for the Google Pixel 4 XL was that this phone's, you know, mixed in with that 90 hertz display and the performance was actually a very, very cool thing going on here. So I do think this in and of itself was a very nice thing. I like having these types of phones because you can basically get a very good performing device. So I do think that in and of itself was a very cool thing going on for this particular phone. So to kind of sum up this whole entire video and to round everything out, I will definitely tell you the Google Pixel 4 XL was a very, very good device. Like I do think this was a good phone when it first came out, but I definitely don't think it stood that well against the other competition of that year, right? Like I do think when it first came out, like when you compare it against the Galaxy S10 and the iPhone 11 Pros, like it just doesn't hold up that well. There are areas where the Pixel 4 XL is better, but I generally don't think this would be one of the standout phones of 2019. I think there are a lot of other phones that I would recommend buying over this thing, but that's kind of one big thing to kind of keep in mind here. So overall, what I'll definitely tell you is the Pixel 4 XL. It's probably not worth it, but phones like the Pixel 5 may still be worth it to some people. The Pixel 6, definitely. All the other Pixels basically after this thing are worth it. Maybe not this thing. So that pretty much covers it up here. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, not me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, Sullivan.